servicemen and women around the world will be tuned in Saturday to the 109th meeting between Army and Navy. Hello, everyone. It's time now for our college football previews presented by AT&T. I'm Tracy Wolfson. Lincoln Financial Field will once again play host to the annual affair. Bragging rights are on the line. On paper, this one looks like it belongs to Navy. The midshipmen enter with a 7-4 record, while Army comes in at just 3-8. and eight. The Black Knights have lost the last six to their rivals, the longest streak in series history, and it hasn't even been close. Army has been outscored 240 to 71 in that stretch. Well, let me now bring in CBS Sports' Spencer Tillman to talk a little Army-Navy. Spencer, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. My apologies in advance, though, Tracy, for my voice. I've been accused of rooting for Oklahoma last week. Not the case. A little raspy, but I'll hang in there with you. <laughs> All right. Well, has this rivalry lost any of its luster because of the recent streak? Not at all, Tracy. Again, as games go, they tend to fit in specific categories, rivalries and so forth. But this game doesn't fit into a category. It really creates one. These players on the field, they know that they're not going to go to the National Football League in almost 100% of the instances. They've got commitments to protect our nation. So theirs is an honor that goes higher than dollars and cents in the National Football League. So again, it hadn't lost its luster, and, and that's not lost, I guarantee you, on the players on the field. Well, that's true. A win for Army, though, would certainly go a long way towards restoring this rivalry to where it was back in the 90s. So, Spencer, what do the Black Knights need to do to come away with a victory this weekend? Could it start with holding on to the football? What? Well, Chip out and their quarterback, you're absolutely right, Tracy, can help them. Again, we talked about both these teams are now back to the option game. Navy never really departed from it. But again, the Black Knights are back to an option attack. And so if Chip Bowden and their quarterback can hang on to it, uh, they've got a shot at staying in and keeping it close. Again, with the ability to run time off the clock and possess the ball, I don't care how prolific you are offensively, you can't score if you're not on the football field. So that's rule number one for Army coming into this one, protect the football and extend drives. Well, Spencer, you mentioned the option attack. Well, when you turn on the TV to watch these two teams battle it out on Saturday, we shouldn't expect much of a passing game. Navy is ranked next to last, averaging just 63.5 passing yards a game. Army is ranked last amongst FBS teams with just 45.7 yards. The midshipmen are all about that triple option offense. Senior Tyree Barnes, the only receiver on the team, with more than four receptions. So what's the key to stopping this triple option attack that Navy runs so well? That's great stuff and great numbers, Tracy. I think the point is, and the, maybe the point of irony here, is Ricky Dobbs, the quarterback for Navy, is just one drop pass away from being 3-0 and as a starter at quarterback as a sophomore. So, again, they won't be relying on the pass, as you pointed out. But the thing that Navy will do is to stretch the boundary in their perimeter play. It's been a reoccurring theme throughout the latter part of this year in particular. Teams that run this option games have given up positions absolute fits. We saw it happen with Georgia Tech, just dismantled Miami. We saw with two weeks to prepare what Georgia had problems with trying to deal with Georgia Tech as well. So again, this, this offense is very, very dangerous if the reads are made properly by Dobbs, the quarterback, if he stretches the boundary in the perimeter, and then when he does pitch it, not like an Army has been struggling with, make sure they secure the ball around the perimeter and get plus yardage. It's as simple as that. If they can do that, they can eat up time off the clock and minimize the opportunities for Army to get on the football field. All right, Spencer. Well, it's that time now. I put you on the spot. Who are you picking? <laughs> I can't go against the midship. I mean, they, they, they call this the Army-Navy battle, but they should reverse it and call it the Navy-Army in honor of the team that's winning of late. And so I'm not going against them. The midshipmen get a victory here. Well, thank you so much, Spencer. And remember, Army-Navy, 12 Eastern time on CBS and CBSSports.com. And make sure to tune in. I'm Tracy Wolfson. Have a great day.